Good morning, everyone. It might be raining outside, but in here the sun's shining. It's wonderful to see everybody, and uh, we hope you'll uh, enjoy this morning's service. Um, just a couple of reminders before we go on. Please keep your masks on um, in church and enjoy quiet singing behind your masks, please. Um, for those of you who um, want to give to the offertory, the plate's outside near the door. Um, we're not passing it round as we usually do. And uh, most importantly, I'd like to welcome our very own Anne Welpton this morning. We're really pleased to have her in the pulpit again. It's lovely to see her. Left my service sheet in the back. Yes. Big sheet. Welcome to you all. Particularly, it's lovely to be here in Grangewood, isn't it? And we would welcome all who've come to Grangewood. We would think of the people who are looking at the service, are with the service in Zoom. Um, people who will be looking at iTube tomorrow when it's all put together and particularly the people who will have their sheets and will be following it with us. We begin our service with hymn number. <clears throat> I've left my sheet. Just a minute. <laughs> Start, isn't it? Thank you. I don't think so. No. It's number fifty-seven. Thank you. Yes. screen. That's good enough, though, isn't it? Yes. Yes. We begin our service as we think for a few minutes in silence of all those who will be joining with us this morning. And now let us begin our service with hymn 57. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. Let us pray. Oh Lord, it's so wonderful to sing, to praise you for your goodness, your love, your might. It's so wonderful to sing, to show our adoration of all that you have given to us through sending Jesus, ascending us Jesus, and to know then that you are always with us. It's so wonderful to sing, to say thank you for the world you have given us, for the beauty and splendor of scenery, for all living things, both large and small, 
for the creativity you have blessed us with in the form of art, literature and music, and through science to appreciate your creation, to solve problems both man-made and of nature, and to give us new experiences. We thank you for all our families and friendships and the opportunities we have to support them and to tell the world of your mighty love. Bless our giving of time, bless our giving of money through our offertory plate or through our bank accounts so that this church can continue to spread your love in this place. But we don't always treat you and your world right, Lord. In words and actions done, in words and actions unfortunately not done. We thank you that by your grace, you forgive our misdoings. Each day we can start anew with a smile on our faces, with a song in our hearts, with words of praise on our lips, knowing that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whoever we're with, however we are feeling, and Lord, you know the changes in our lives that we've experienced over the last 18 months. But we can always worship you in your might and majesty our God and King. Amen. When Christine was here a fortnight ago, she started with the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And from there, it went on that Jesus walked on the water. And then, as usual, the multitudes followed him. And now Jesus is talking to the people. And Brenda is going to read it for us. The, the reading today, <clears throat> sorry, is from John chapter 6, verses 35 and 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me, not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that no one eats it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. Our hymn, our next hymn, we had a lot of trouble with the hymns, sorry. Mine is, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And... I don't know whether that is the one that the people who are typing this out have got. So I'm not sure. Well, if you look at 254, 
Ask it and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. We may not have music. Seek beneath the lesser kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I'm the bread of life. Once again, we take a look at this very, very well-known verse from John's Gospel. Bread, well, we know that bread is essential for our bodily needs and sustains our lives. But what did Jesus mean when he said, I am the bread of life? I'm sure there are thousands of sermons have been written about that phrase, I am the bread of life. For our lives, we have bodily <clears throat> and spiritual needs, don't we? For our well-being. For our bodily needs, we need food and drink and exercise. For our spiritual needs, we need to think. For instance, we have our own opinions and beliefs. Relationships with other people, we need to think about it. So we may well ask, well, what did he mean when he said, I am the bread of life. How did he show this in his life? How did he talk about it? We can look for the bodily needs at the story of the feeding of the 5,000. We all know that story. I think most people know that story, but Jesus had been talking to the people and they were hungry. Food was provided for the crowds Jesus blessed the loaves and the fishes that little boy brought them. Food was provided by Jesus. But also, importantly, people followed Jesus, didn't they? Because they'd heard that he healed people. And so they brought their friends and relatives, those who were sick both in body and in mind. They'd heard that Jesus healed people. And so they were rushing to take heed and to take their servants and their family to Jesus. And we know that he did heal people. But how did he show concern for their spiritual needs? Well, when he was with the people, the ordinary people, he always talked about things they could understand, things they were familiar with. They knew he told good stories. But these stories always had a deeper meaning. 
and many would think about them when they went away and understand them. For many, it was just a story, but for most people, they would think. So we think about spiritual needs now when we look and remember the parables. I'm not going to give you all the parables, but the story about the good shepherd. A shepherd has lost a sheep. He searched until he found it, and then he celebrated with his friends. God is like that shepherd, Jesus said, when someone is lost and feels that life has no meaning. God wants them back. They are precious to him, and their lives are meaningful to God. The parable of the Good Samaritan a Jew is attacked by robbers who leave him for dead, and he was helped by a Samaritan. The Jews and the Samaritans were enemies. They certainly wouldn't help each other, we know that. But this Samaritan cared for him and took him to an inn and asked the owner to look after him and paid him for doing it. Jesus said, God is like that like that Samaritan. God loves everyone and is ready to help them. Jesus told us and showed us in his parables and how he lived, how we should live. His basic message was clear and simple. Go and love everyone. Help people whom you, you love and even those whom you don't love. That's a great demand, isn't it? But we may well ask, well, was, what does that mean for us in 2021? Because it has to mean something for us, otherwise it's just stories that we are reading. What can it mean to us? The message that he gave is quite simple. Go and show God's love in your lives. And in every circumstance, God will provide what you need. Well, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Particularly if we're asked to be loving to people whom we find it difficult to like. But today, I think for the last year and a half, so many people have been saying, where is God and his love in the world that we see around us today. Most of us right at the beginning would say, where is our God in all this? But if we look around, we see people helping one another. On our, t on our TVs, we've been there at the bedside, haven't we? We've seen people dying. We've seen the people who are sick and we see the doctors and nurses who are giving their all in their work. They are exhausted, but they're still working. But let's not forget the hospital staff, the kitchen staff, the cleaners, the laundry workers, never, never thought of them, but very, very important. And all the other members of staff whom often we don't see, all those working in our hospitals. In our old people's homes, the sick and the elderly, the staff working there and the carers. Then there are the shop workers, the council workers, the food producers, and we could go on. Many of us have had to stay in our houses, but these people have had to go out and work every day. We sometimes forget about them. But also, let's look more closely at our own lives and the lives round about us. There are people who are shopping for others, those who are helping neighbours, and often people have said to me, we didn't know our neighbours until we went and asked them if they needed anything. They didn't know their neighbours, and we know how true that is. People making telephone calls. I've been making telephone calls. I, I needed to hear someone's voice. And also, have you said hello to somebody you didn't know? 
people who are strangers and having a chat. I hope everybody says yes. My daughter once said to me, you don't have to speak to everybody you know, Mum, when we're on a walk. Well, I think it's important just to say hello. On the television the other day, I heard that one of the local YMCA groups in one town there had decided to help with all the community work. And I'm sure you can recall special examples that you have given or that somebody has given to you. I have one, and I think I said this at Christine's service when she asked us, so I for forgive me for repeating it, but it's very important to me. At the beginning of COVID, we were considered vulnerable. I like that word, vulnerable. It's even better if it's very vulnerable, but it meant that David and I had to stay in our house and in the garden and walk up and down the drive for three months. And that was quite hard. Lots of people going past with their dogs said hello, by the way. And then my daughter who lives in Leeds had asked one of her friends who lives in Woolerton if she wouldn't mind bringing me um, bread and milk. Lovely. Knock at the door one morning and there was this great youth, six foot four, a basketball player, I gather, and he said to me, hello, I'm Sonia's son. She asked me to get some milk and bread for you. She said it would be all right just to leave it on the step and we would get it. He said, but I thought I'd knock on the door and tell you who I am. That's what I remember. And for three months, Callum brought the bread and the milk and other things if we phoned him up. He didn't particularly know me. I haven't seen him since he was about three. But that to me was a wonderful thing for us. So Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And we're pointing this morning to our bodily needs and our spiritual needs. And also how Jesus showed us how we could do that, his life by his life, and what he said and did. We've looked at its relevance today. You will have many other things that you can think of. But God's message through Jesus is always the same. Go and love people. I can provide you with all you need in this life, both bodily and spiritually. I am the bread of life, said Jesus. I think he probably said or thought, said to them, you can be my bread of life. Go and everyone you meet, go and show love to them. Amen. And now we have our prayers of intercession. In the times of silence, bring your own prayers to our God. Let us pray. In our prayers of intercession, we come to our God. Heavenly Father, you have called us to bring our prayers to you, both prayers for others and prayers for ourselves. We pray for the world, particularly those suffering from the effects of the pandemic in all countries. Because of television, we are there with them. We think of those battling against forest fires in the USA and Canada, and now Turkey and Greece. We think of those afflicted by floods in Germany, Belgium and Holland, as well as those in China.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, we think of all those in our society who are ministering to the needs of others. We pray for those in our hospitals and all the caring professions and emergency services, doctors, nurses, and ancillary staff, those working in nursing homes and hospices, and so many others who support them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of all those who offer their time and energy as volunteers who look after elderly parents, disabled children, and terminally ill loved ones at home. We think of those who each day perform small but vital acts of kindness for friends and family neighbors or strangers, all unnoticed sometimes, except by a few. Lord, in your mercy. Now, Lord, we bring our personal prayers to you. We know that you are always with us wherever we may be. We know you hear each one of us and know of all our concerns. Eternal God, all seeing, all knowing, all wise, all good. We come before you with all these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we sing together 706, Longing for Light. I hope.
peace and blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all and with all those whom we love, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>